Hi, I'm Darrell John Bunting Stewart. I'm 25 years old and I'm born and bred in the heart of Scotland, the city of Perth. I'm also the founder of Indie Broad, so I thought I would get myself out of the way first regarding Indie Broad views, just to maybe give a better idea of who I am, what Indie Broad is, and primarily what Indie Broad views is actually for. So, first and foremost, Indie Broad views is purely to publish people's opinions and views as purely opinions and views of their own, rather than misconstruing them as facts or trying to create a spin off of what they're saying. I'm purely going to publish what people have to say regarding the same questions throughout the 51 weeks of the year, with a couple of topical ones thrown into. Personally, I believe it's absolutely essential to be engaged in politics. I don't quite like being aware of it doesn't quite cut it because then you can say, oh, I well, listen to the budget, but I'm, I'm taking no notice of it and I'm not going to try and do anything to change it. I'm not even going to vote. That's ridiculous. If you don't vote, you're not going to have a say in anything. <laughs> like, I know it only comes once every five years regarding the Westminster Parliament, but you know, it's still important to do so. So I'd say, yeah, it's essential to be engaged in politics. I am indeed currently registered to vote and I voted in the last election which was the 2015 general election. I voted for my local MP who was, has been standing for the past seven years as far as I'm concerned, maybe even longer. I'd imagine it's probably longer. But Pete Wishart, the local MP for the SNP, as I thought he would give and has already shown that he can give a good, fair representation of the people of Perth in the House of Commons. How is the NHS in Scotland? I haven't actually had, I've been lucky enough to not have that much experience regarding the NHS. Obviously I've had family that have been in the area, I was born in Perth <laughs> to an, in an NHS hospital. So as far as I'm concerned it's, it's done well. It's running not bad. But I can see there is also massive problems currently in the NHS with both regards to funding, with regards to staffing. Even just morale in hospitals, I think, is severely suffering, which is, is causing some major problems. But I, ca I can't actually give that in depth a description or indeed some solid knowledge on whether or not it is running well. But in personal experience, yes, it's fine. I'm, I really like the fact that we even have such a, a proposition, <laughs> never mind it actually being real. I don't know. I think the main thing that probably stood out for me was, yeah, indeed, Scotland wasn't really cons considered by the Tories at all. But I think it puts forward the case for independence a little bit further as well. Like, if you consider that about half of the population of Scotland that voted, voted for an anti-austerity agenda, then we get an all-blue Tory budget a few months after the vote it doesn't even consider that agenda at all. It's a farce. Currently, I think if we're taking the whole of mankind into account here, then our greatest threat is probably our effect on climate and climate change. Trident isn't, isn't in any way a deterrent for climate change. Climate change is going to happen whether or not there's nukes in the world or not. I think it's something we should properly address, as well as, like, I don't, I don't agree that nuclear weapons are a deterrent in any sense, unless you have a certain amount for mutually assured destruction, then maybe you'll stop someone doing something, but I can't imagine three or four nuclear submarines settled in the Clyde with decades old weapons on them is going to be a deterrent for anybody, especially not climate change. Oh, I think it's maybe getting a bit late now. I think the best course of action would probably get a time machine and never have joined the Euro. Like, from where I'm standing, which is 
thousands of miles away from Athens, like I am in the middle of the River Tay in Scotland. I think they should, well I think that they're being punished because their, sort of their culture is a more laid back, not as progressive, not as productive culture as some of the Central European or even North European countries. And I don't feel that a country should be penalised because say their the pension age may be younger, it's their way of life, you can't, you can't take that away from someone or penalise them because it's different. And I think if you've got the IMF telling you, or telling the public in fact, that it's not a good deal that they're getting, why would you then accept these terms of a deal? Because I think 10 years down the line the same thing's going to come up, I don't even know if it's going to take 10 years, but if they'd just gone back to the drachma, devalue their currency, focus on exports and tourism, which their infrastructure is already set up for, I think they would be able to get out the hole quicker than to be constantly in a spiral of debt with the European Union. And the Eurozone, should I say. If she was right here, right now, I would probably question her on the fact that the SNP's stance with regards to North Sea oil is still quite uncertain. I'd rather they went straight towards either we're going to go continue exploration, which I wouldn't be happy about. I know, I'm fair, I think we've taken enough out of the sea before. Like, oil's a dirty fuel, we've, we've got the sun, we've got wind, we've got lovely tidal rivers, tidal lagoons, the Pentland Firth. And we, we've got enough potential energy on this island to not need to dig in the ocean bed or the seabed for, for oil. And I think I'd probably poke at her about that. <laughs>